Callista player in his own right. Yeah. Doesn't want to first pick it. Respects the fact that Radiant does prioritize that champion incredibly high. Take it off the rift. Yeah, just don't allow that one to happen. Rai is going to be the answer there for the Direwolves as well. So, well, by the Chiefs for the Direwolves is the final ban yet to come through from this DW lineup. And we'll see whether they are going to be able to ban anything exciting away. But are you seeing any openings here in the bans thus far, Spawn? Yeah, not really. You know, this is pretty standard stuff. It, the only thing that I'm wondering about is teams are obviously thinking about this a lot. We've gone down into single digits every single ban so far. Sharp does take away Sivra as the last one. And Direwolves, they've gone very generic here. Only really the Nunu that's targeted at Spooks. Notably, Echo is still available. So he's able to take that into the jungle, see if he can rake some havoc. That has been the second jungler that he does like to default to. Yeah, exactly right. And we do have, of course, the Nah being banned away finally there. So that's going to be the answer by the Chiefs. And it is going to leave Alistair available. And if Nard is going to perform on any champion, it's this one. Yeah, it certainly is. You know, we thought it was a pick away when he kept taking it against Ejim when he was on the uh, Legacy lineup. Yeah. This is also a rematch of that. Ejim, of course, now on the Chiefs. But Nard is a terrific Alistair player in his own right, able to get through with the early roams, really impact the rest of the map. And he's just a good team fight initiator. So look for him to really, I guess, a lot of pressure, but he surely will de deliver. Yeah, just not scared to flash out by Pulverize, really get in amongst it. It was actually a four-man Pulverize that did a whole lot of the work in winning them their final game there against Legacy in the finals last year. But the answer is going to be Hecarim and possibly even an Echo here by the Chiefs. I know actually Swiffer has been picking up a little bit more, but of course Spooks a fantastic Echo player. Yeah, Spooks is a great Echo player. Every single time you see it, just expect it to go into the jungle position. That's where they like to play it right now. Hecarim is interesting. They want a lane bully up there in the top lane to try and take it to Sharp. We've seen that teams have done this over and over again. Swiper likes to run Ignite over the smite up there. Does like to go for second item Trinity Force and make sure that he is the lane bully. Has been very vocal lately about Renekton. Hasn't gone for that one and picked it up, but is on a very similar champion looking for the flanks, trying to assassinate the back line. Yeah, and you actually were talking about talking to me about this before. The fact that Swiper likes to play meta champions. He likes to have his pick sort of reinforced by the rest of the world. And, you know, now that it's being played over in Korea, we might see it again. Yeah, might be able to see it again, but it will be Hacker and Locked Away this time around. So that's a good point. A little bit of pretty meta picks up there in the top lane. We talk about it, but Spooks on Echo. I think this is the third time we've seen it coming through on him. Has a ridiculously high KDA and very good performances. Likes to gank mid lane. One of the last champions left that he actually really does get into Swiffer's lane and try and impact that in a 2v2 sense. So we'll see whether that is a trend that continues against perfection. Yeah, and the answer here by the dial was going to be that Rek'Sai and, of course, Rumble for the top lane and jungle. So we'll see whether that is going to work out. Of course, mid lane, mid game, sorry, power being picked up in these two picks. Yeah, certainly is a little bit more early game coming through for Sybil, yeah. able to impact with some strong ganks. We've seen that he likes to get around the map early, but in the top lane, it's going to be Rumble. Once level six hits so those double pen items, we talk about it all the time, just means that securing objectives is going to be a little bit easier for Direwolves, and this is something that teams have struggled against Chiefs. We did a warding spotlight just because of how well they ward for objectives, and getting ahead, they get the first two dragons nearly every single game. Teams need to start trying to take that away and break some of the momentum. Well, we'll see whether they can. And what I really like is the fact that they've got Alistair and the Rexai over the side of the Direwolves. Multiple knockups here to make sure that they can keep these fights really under control for themselves. But the answer is going to be the bottom lane here in the Morgana and the Corkior. Unless Swift has got a sneaky Morgana pick in the mid. Yeah, he certainly doesn't. So that's going to be a support <laughs> Morgana coming through. They mentioned the knockups. One of them being, I guess, the Rexai, who doesn't deal with breaking through the Black Shield whatsoever. So it's a very good... Uh, champion to take in the support position. I like it. Means that bottom lane pretty much isn't a gank anymore. And Corky has been something that Radius looked towards a little bit more lately. It's seeing a lot of play over in other regions, especially the LPL. A lot of mid-game power has that one item spike with the Trinity Force. You just need boots to those soft boots coming through there. Great skirmisher as soon as you get that Blade of the Rowan King. And in what is a pretty fight-heavy re region, Corky is a very good pickup for his early game power. Yeah, I like it, but the answer looks to be double AD carry here from the Direwolves as Tristana and Varus are being hovered over. Perfection wanting to hop back on that Varus one more time and get this poke happening. Yeah, poke siege comp coming through once again. When you have a turret taker like Tristana and you couple it with, it's actually not going to be. It's going to be a little bit more of a yeah. team fight comp coming through. They swap over to Azir at the last second. I actually thought they were going Varus to deny Swift for the Azir pick and try and force him onto Victor. But by taking the Azir, he's probably going to take Victor anyway. Yeah, it could be a possibility here. But one thing I really, really love is the fact that they do now have 
the massive bouncy castle. They've now got the Emperor's Divide for even more. I mean, you can get a little mini knock-up with the E from Azir as well. So a whole lot of unmitigatable CC coming out of this Direwolves lineup. And King is going to feel very safe with all of the peel available from so many different roles. Yeah, and you know, it's a zone control comp. Once again, they've got all the knock-ups that create this area that you can't enter. They've got the Equalizer as well. That's more of a damage zone control. And it will be the Victor taken yeah. into it. We've seen this matchup so many times. Victor doesn't seem to mind it, but we'll see whether Perfection can put any additional pressure down on Swiffer. Yeah, we'll see whether it happens. Look, I'm looking at this Chiefs lineup. I'm seeing the fact that they've got a Hecarim and that Victor in the solo lanes, really wanting to get towards the late game where Victor's going to be able to one-shot someone. Hecarim's going to be able to run around and destroy anyone he wants. But are they going to be able to stand up to the team fight available from the Diables? Victor has no weakness in the game. He's not a late game carry. <laughs> he is good at every single point from when he's level 1 through to level 18. He really is a good solid mid laner. His wave clear is fantastic. It's very hard to pressure the man because he's got such long poke coming through as well. Very good burst damage, as you mentioned, can go a variety of builds depending on how much his Goldie is going to get. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. When you got Corky, you're probably even happier to fight right now. So yeah. both of them looks like two comps that are just happy to run head to head. And if anything, Chiefs have shown that through their dominance this split, their zone control, their vision control, and overall coordination has been unsurpassed by any team. Direwolves, they've picked up a team that can go head to head with them, but now they need to execute on it. Yeah, we've seen the fact that as well, King picking up the um, Tristana in this particular matchup did, did have the opportunity to go for the Caitlyn, have the extra range against the Corky. Is there a reason why Corky wouldn't be someone you'd pick a Caitlyn into? Corky's able to shove out a lot of lanes. I think Caitlyn still bullies the lane relatively effectively. This seems to be an Oceanic thing. People like the idea of being able to shove down turrets with Tristana. Maybe it will be yeah. a lane swap, try and protect Sharp a little bit more. Of course, they know that Swiper takes Ignite on his Hecarim, so he's a little bit more susceptible to being swapped on. But we'll have to see whether it's something they can make work because we have seen a lot of Tristana and we haven't seen that much success coming through from the champion. Yeah, not quite yet. Of course, people still more than happy to pick that one up. Tallywacker most especially, as well as Shiny there from Sudden Fear, both sort of picking it up a lot, not necessarily finding back-to-back -back victories on the champion, but definitely pushes down turrets very, very well. And as you can see on your screen right now, these are the lineups heading head-to-head. -head. And on the side of Direwolves, I've guessed, I guess they've got the Rumble that might fall off a little bit in the later stages of the game. Probably not that much, but the rest looks like it's going to scale very nicely. Yeah, it certainly does. You know, Tristana, more of a mid-game carry than she is super late game, just because we hit the draw B passive that is the range, and a little bit of the attack speed coming through from the queue. Have to prioritize those tanks up there. Lineup of Chiefs, they have the Corky that falls off slightly late game. I'm not completely convinced on it, but because you don't go a lot of crit, does fall away yep. as opposed to some of the hyper carries coming through there. So we'll have to see whether it is something that they go for a mid-game centric comp. I know that Echo especially can start taking over with all of his base stats in that mid-game if he gets rolling. Becomes very tanky and hard to deal with, but also dishes out fantastic damage. Yes, not to mention the fact that the zone control and CC available in his kit's fantastic. But ladies and gentlemen, we want to hear from you. Make sure you're using that hashtag DWWIN if you think Dials are going to take this one, or the hashtag CHFWIN if you think the Chiefs are once again going to pull out a victory. 11 in a row would make it if they take this game, and... It's a whole lot of wins for this team, really looking to get back into that international scene. Yeah, it certainly is. And you know, it's not the first game of the last week. So the pressure still is on for the Chiefs. They might oh, be yeah. able to drop more than one. And against a team like Diables, who have a history of being able to get in there and upset. Remember, this was a rookie team last split that came in and took the OPL by storm, making it through to that final. If anyone can steal a win here, and it would be a steal, probably would be this lineup. Yeah, and the Die Wolves, they did actually manage to take a victory off the Chiefs in the best of five series in the finals. Of course, we did go to four games, I believe. So, uh, look, they might be able to do it here. Yeah, certainly might be able to do that, especially with Nada in the lineup. That support yeah. player coming through, as we said, a lot of experience. He, I think that with the aggression in the bottom lane now, King has a very aggressive support behind him. They will look to fight a little bit more. And that was something that we questioned. Is Has King lost a little bit of his flair? Because he was this AD carry that liked to be in people's face. We saw week one flashing over walls, going absolutely bonkers on the Sivir. Something that he needs to recapture in his play style. Because if he's not a lane bully, he doesn't get ahead. He does tend to struggle in the team fights. Has a little bit of wild turtle syndrome where he likes to be up near the front line. And has been caught out a couple of times. Yeah, and we'll see whether they can actually utilize this effectively as they head onto the rift against the Chiefs. And we did actually hear from Rhymeister, who spoke about the fact that the Chiefs' bottom lane were actually playing quite aggressively for what their champions were able to do. He's saying things like, respect the champion, not the player, this sort of thing, because the Chiefs were just so far off that lane, more than happy to bully. Yeah, exactly right. The Chiefs look to win their 2v2. That is a lane that they are incredibly confident in. To the 
fact that Swiffer said that they are the primary carries of the team. That's why he doesn't need to be this big flashy mid laner anymore like he was in the first split where he was coming through with all these kills. More than happy to get behind Radiant, play the scaling control majors, make sure he offers utility and damage late game and just allow for the rest of the map to do their thing. Spook's giving a lot more love to Radiant this time around. Ejim very vocal as a shot caller down in the bottom lane and they have found great success so far in the season. Yeah, it just seems to be the swap up that the Chiefs needed in order to find that extra eek of power there for this team. Of course, only dropping one game last split is probably going to mean that they're feeling pretty confident. But as they headed over internationally, they found some kinks in, the, in that armor. So maybe it might be sort of what they need in order to get them through in a little bit more of a successful fashion. Yeah, and a lot of those kinks were mid-game champion pools, able to get the top laner rolling in 2v1 situations. This is going to be another test to see if they can fix a lot of those problems. Yeah, but speaking of seeing whether they can fix the problems, let's get onto the caster desk with pastry time and Rusty to get us into the game. Thank you very much, Atlas Sport. Don't know if I can fix all your problems, Atlas, but we can at least solve the problem if you guys get to watch some League of Legends. My name is Julian Pastry Time Car. Joining with me this time is Zach Rusty Pie. And this is a great opening game for week six, Rusty, as the Chiefs are just about to take on Direwolves. You couldn't ask for a better opening game, especially from these two teams right now. And as they mentioned outside, if any team can take that win away from the Chiefs, it's going to be this Direwolves side. They've got their new support in place now. All of the pictures are ready to be painted. Yeah, they are. And we'll see what they can get done here with the comp. To be honest, I like how the Divers have drafted just because Perfection especially, he's picked a scaling mid laner. We saw what happened against Legacy. Almost got it done on Varus, a very mid-game focused champion. But this time, he's going to scale right up with Azir. Yeah, and he's got a little bit more mobility and utility besides just the Varus, who we saw get completely wrecked by being ran out. So a lot more opportunities for him to go big in this game and really carry his team through. And we'll see what he wants to do when we do come onto the Rift, whether he can carry, get through that early game trough essentially up against the Victor who is strong all game. Yeah, Victor, like you could hear Spawn there saying, just an insanely strong champion right now. Makes sense why we're seeing so much of him in the OPL and around the world here. I guess the other question has to be the new bottom lane for Diwolves King was the primary carry of his team, at least in the regular season last split. Yeah. Perfection definitely stepped up in playoffs, but we're under the roof now. We'll have to see what happens. The Diwolves, they need wins here to make sure they secure top spots here moving into playoffs and the Chiefs, they're on top of the world. They still want to keep going undefeated though. That's the their goal right now, the Chiefs, to stay undefeated. But you're right, the Direwolves surging now as we're getting to the later end of the split, looking to overtake Legacy as they are in the in third by one loss. So not too far away from the Legacy lineup right now. Diwolves being aggressive to start it off too, looking for that 2v1. And Legacy, they have a really tough match as well against Avant tonight. So if the Dives can pull out a win here, puts additional pressure on Legacy to make sure they can perform. So we'll see what they get done. Like you said, that is getting some scouting vision down. Good wards actually to check the top side of the map for a potential lane swap. And King, who's walking down to the bottom side, might want to try and get some fast push going on the Tristana. Yeah, looking for a standard lane, the Direwolves, and just preventing a 2v1 swap coming out from the Chiefs right now as the ward does spot him in they ping him out. That is really good information for the Chiefs. Not only do they spot or the lane swap, although no, he is being it? a bit tricky, but they at least have these skilled rocket jumps. So they have a bit of extra knowledge there as well. But that is extra sneaky there from King. If you recall and go back to the top lane, it doesn't really matter what you have started as your first spell because you're going to be versing the top laner of the Chiefs, Swiper. He's going to start in the jungle, but he doesn't have that smite to compensate like most Hecarims do. No, he should be able to take this one camp fairly comfortable for himself, but you're right. Sharp's going to start with his jungler on the Gromp here, like you can see. And this might cause some problems. Nada, in fact, as well, not with his AD carry, might be looking for a roam here. Maybe looking for a roam. Most likely to put Vision down at that red buff, and Direwolves are going to be able to vertically jungle if they choose, or just have the Vision down and go to their own red immediately as a reactionary response. And you can see Nada there, new support player, like we said. Very experienced player. Just walking and checking the buff. Knows they're not there, so can pretty much safely assume Spooks is on that side of the jungle. And if the Chiefs wanted to spot that land swap, King, he's managed to wamboozle them. He's starting in the top side with Nada. Completely ruse them right now. You'd be a little bit miffed on the Chiefs lineup, but Ejim... Oh, perfection now as well. Does have level two, but Ejim gonna line up the binding. That was a sick flash! And Perfection gets away. Fantastic reactions from Perfection to actually use that flash from almost a point blank Morgana. The rest of the Chiefs coming around with Ejim now, though. 
Very standard, just found a very cute opportunity to gank in the mid lane there. Yeah. With EG. Nice stuff though. We saw Tegan against Legacy actually in that immunity win with great success there with the mid lane Morgana gank. So Nada gonna get annoying. Nope, never mind. That's his own team. Gonna make sure they're okay. <laughs> Shivel and Shuffle. Have some assistance from the Cal. But as you can see, both teams jungling on their strong sides, which is why we're jungling vertically, not horizontally. We're just playing the numbers game at the moment, staying wherever they have the most numbers to quickly rotate if need be. You can see Morgana rotating between the mid lane and the bottom lane now sitting there with his AD carry and Raider, who has found himself with a slight level advantage. Yeah, both uh, both sides actually pushing down relatively aggressively, but Tristano, we've seen it before, not bad at pushing down the old turrets. Now, Tristano's pretty good at pushing down turrets, so we have seen in the past and at the moment, but more members hitting the turret here from the side of the Chief. It may go down first. Yeah, it's actually a double four-man, I guess four-minute proxy coming through here for both sides, wanting to take the turrets quickly. Good early transition from the Chief, so it might give them the first turret. But the dive is going to answer pretty quickly. Even Sybil's going to join in just to make sure it goes down. Yeah, the turrets should be timed around the same time in the game. We'll see where the rotations want to take the teams immediately after this turret as the Chief's trying to deny as many as possible. Yeah, sort of ping onto the dragon there as well. That shard should take out the turret and does there. So up tower there for the dives. The Chief's denying a bit more CS, but they'll do the same thing in just a couple seconds. Yeah, we'll see if all of the Diables want to recall, in fact, because the teleport from Sharp is available. We're going to most likely see a reset lane. Just a very sneaky and very early tower from both teams. Yeah, good little ward there, but it does spot out Swiper, but he'll come up to the lane now and try and take some of that CS away. Bottom side falls there as well, and the Chiefs, again, being on the bottom side of the map, are able to take away a dragon. This will go uncontested. Yeah, all in all, the current advantage is going to be this dragon. Not much else across the map besides a bit of farm in favor of Swiper, who has found himself with a size of a lead considering. Ooh, Egypt getting a bit low, does go down there. As Spooks is able to smite away the dragon, and King gonna return to his kind of longer bottom lane now, but he does have a pickaxe to help himself out. Yeah, essentially, just a free turret in between. They find themselves completely reset again now, back to square one, almost like the start of the game all over again, except the dragon, the only key difference. Yep, so we'll see what happens with dragon number two, especially, of course, because that'll come up around the time the first dragon will be looked at, but Sharp instead on the top side with his Doran shield and a ruby crystal, very defensive start. As Nada might be looking for a gank here on the mid lane, level 2 on the Alistar, but is spotted a little too early there on the gank. Looking but not finding a gank just there, as we're seeing a lot of pressure and a lot of map movement from both teams right now. The Chiefs have put Swiper back in the bottom. Yeah, King level 4, though, does have all those abilities leveled up, you have to think. Able to do lots of good damage to the turret. Sybil with a nice little steal on the Raptor, actually. Gonna take that away from Spooks. Bit risky to be on this side of the map though. Spooks gonna get aggressive, but Sybil wants to answer in there as well. He's actually just going 1v1 right now. Fury bars max. Spooks has to be careful. Pops down the convergence, but Egypt's here at level two. Perfection is gonna join him, but he eats the binding. Egypt with a great black shield as Radier comes down as well. And the dials. Very scary situation, but nobody going down. They find themselves in a tight spot, but dodging the Morgana binding actually gets perfection hit by the same binding. So everyone rotating, but nothing actually coming from it. All in all, Sybil actually having a positive trade onto Spooks, and he can now sit around in the jungle of his. He's of actually team. stalking Spooks now, you can see, with that tremor sense. Knows that he's going to the other side. Unfortunately for Rek'Sai, there are no camps to take here, but pinging in the mid lane, going in for a gank onto Swiffer. Splash immediately is there. This will take damage. Yeah, the Chaos Storm's out. Whoa. Perfection gonna ride his way no in, mana. but he no doesn't mana. have mana. That's not good news. Perfection goes in a bit too Ooh. aggressive. Good auto attacks keep him safe. Oh, the Prey Seeker too. But wow. Very close for first blob, but no dice this time. I don't know about recalling there. <laughs> <laughs> I might reassess Swiffer if I were you. Well, Perfection going to push the lane out. Spooks will join in to cover the farm, although Swiffer actually staying to secure the wave. Spooks is here to protect him. Might even stop this parallel convergence. Now Perfection sees it. Now going to get stunned in there. Spooks lines up the Timewinder, does land the slow, but it's not enough damage. It's funny that Swiffer actually staying to last hit that entire wave, baited Perfection into using the barrier. Did not have the flash available, so well rotated by Spooks there and unintentionally baited by his opponent. Look at these greedy mid laners yeah. though, staying for even more CS. Super has gone back, so he'll get a forbidden an idol for himself. Perfection staying just to make sure he's the one with the most CS when he backs next. He's going to have about 1,600 gold himself at this stage of the game. 19, I tell you that, he's got 2,000. That's he a lot of gold. All of the items right now. So he's looking in a good spot. Bottom tower did go down here as well. King able to take that one away. You can see three points in the explosive charge. Might be lining up a dive here onto Swiper. These towers will go quickly if the Chiefs can't respond. It's not too easy to dive Swiper, especially because he is level six now and has that onslaught of shadows readily available to be used. So smartly just putting damage down onto the turret, 
Now they're going to opt to recall, get some items, reassess their situation. Yeah, Sharp in the top side, meanwhile, having a fine time actually against Radia currently, is behind Swiper and CS, so hasn't got as many last hits given his 1v1 kind of conditional 2v1, I guess. But you know, if he's keeping it safe, he's getting farm. He's still Rumble. He should be relevant with a low item threshold. Yeah, he's going to spike a little bit sooner than that of the Hecarim, of course. But in saying that, the CS difference is starting to creep up more and more. If it continues in this upward trend in favor of Swiper, then once they reset back to the 1v1 lanes, the Hecarim against the Rumble, it could be really bad. It could, and I actually love this from Dio, sort of trying to accelerate the game even more. Perfection's going to get blue buff, that'll be nice. But King with Berserker Greaves goes back to the mid lane because he just wants another outer turret. He's just looking to get down all of the turrets that he can as soon as possible. They're now grouped as three members, Perfection with blue and King in the mid lane. They should be able to do this quite quickly if Victor was not there to wave clear. Yeah, wave clear really strong on Victor's side as well, but the Dial's trying to pressure right now. Swiper actually moving over there as well from the bottom lane, trying to see if he can get a look in for an ultimate. But the Dial's, they're going to be three, almost four man strong right now. We're just sharp in the bottom side of the map. They know Dragon's coming back up, but they really want this turret. They definitely want this turret. You can tell what the Dial's are looking to do right now is just push everywhere possible. Pressure in all of the lanes so far. And they are going for this This is one. not enough wave clear parallel convergence down though. King will dodge at perfection. We'll get slowed. It's one tower hit, but not too much damage. And the Dialves, they can just keep doing this to be honest. Sharp's already on the right side of the map and Radier has to clear in the top. They're actually intelligently moving Swipe in there now because they know Dragon's up soon. While I agree that they can continue to do this, a prolonged siege such as this had Radier solo pushing and getting farmed. So he will start to creep back though he's behind now, further into advantage. Nice Duke of the Binding though for King, should give Chiefs over to the, uh, the turret, sorry. Never mind, Dialogues can't quite get it just yet. Spooks with the double bus by the looks of things, might just be one defending nicely here. Level six on the Echo as well. The oh, Dialogues are playing doubles. with fire a bit. That's not good when Bad luck, Swiffer. Yep. <laughs> That's what we're taking from that right there. And you're right, they can probably continue to siege now, given no blue buff. Yeah, that really hurts, actually. Now King has to be careful. W is down. Spooks wants to fight. Goes in onto Sharp, who takes a good chunk of damage. Port down as well, though, from Swiper. will join in, but King aggressively moving in. Oh, Nada around the side. Knocks him back in, and first blood goes to King. Swiper takes out Alistar, though, as Nada will go down. A weird trade, though, goes in the advantage of Direwolves. It does go in advantage of Direwolves. You can see Nada actually tower diving that one to make it all happen. They find up the pick, but they can continue to siege this right now. Swiper has his ultimate available, but it'd be very risky to overcommit to a prevention of this turret going down. It would. Perfection still has his ulti as well, so King and him will team up. They'll do that safely. Might not be in time for this Dragon. Sharp holding onto his TP, but not his ulti. And that was a level 5 tower die from Nada, by the way. Didn't even have his ultimate. Doesn't even matter. This is Nada to a T right now. We've said he's been aggressive in the past, and now he's with King. You can see that oh. hasn't changed in the slightest. King taking a bit of poke there from Spooks. Has to dodge more bindings. There's a lot of skill shots here from the Chief's side. But they are, again, pulling out the dragon, trying to retain control. If there's one thing we said in the pregame is that the Diewolves have a lot of zone control behind that Rumble and the Azir, even the Rek'Sai and Alistar to a degree. But so do the Chiefs. The spells that we've got, the Morgana Bindings, the Parallel Convergence, that Chronosphere, even the Victor as well. Both teams have a lot of zone control. Yeah, have to play around things nicely. King, though, diving in with Sybil onto Swiffer. Damage goes down, ports in from Sharp. Swiper gets a great three-man ulti on top of them, and Sharp going to get blown up. Spooks tacks him oh. out perfection, trying to make a big play but can't quite get in for the damage on Radia. Right time, right place here for this one. Perfection will go down. King will join them as well on the Chiefs. Get three free kills and a dragon. Perfection does not have enough items to be as aggressive as he just was in terms of positioning. Finds himself trying to make an aggressive play into the face of Radia. Flashing out and just going straight down. Three members of the Dials go down. A fantastic ultimate from Swiper as well. And this side of the Chiefs just explode into an advantage. And you can see the gold now right back to even after that. So the Dials did have a slight lead, but that'll be all back square. And of course, we talked about it after the first level one play. Realistically, with the game this even, Dials going to have the turret advantage, but Chiefs have the dragon advantage. When it's one to three in turrets and the gold is 200 in favor of the opposition team that has only got one turret, that is essentially becoming free gold available on the map to take at any time. Yep. So they have found themselves with an indirect gold lead, essentially. But at the moment, it is still possible to be completely reset. Dials are definitely not behind. Their team comp is still about to come into its strength in the mid-game. It is, and we saw just the early game played very well, had a clear plan, take those out of towers, yeah. and then contest for that next dragon. My question, Rusty, is now what do the Dials do? 
They need to completely reassess, work around the lack of outer turrets and either look towards an inner or get complete wall control around the dragons and all areas of the map where they're looking to rotate to. We've seen a lot of supports actually go for the Ruby Sight Stone upgrade immediately to prolong objective control and map movement so that you can finally catch someone out of position. That may be a smart idea right now. Up to see here, we've got Sight Stones right now for both supports and just one of the junglers. Cybel has his spooks right now. Does not working on boots too by the looks of things. Maybe looking for some Merc Treads. Nada. Lives. Finally level 6. Yes, the ward does lead, but Perfection might have found Spooks here. No ulti, remember. No actually back already for Azir, but does not go all in for that one. No vision of where the rest of the team were looking at the top side of the map. You can see a lot of Direwolves wards, but none of them in a position to judge where Spooks just was. So he gets to back out with a, a bit of poke taken to the face, but nothing deadly. And King actually finding himself in the mid lane, kind of rotating in. Might be looking to pressure another tower here. You can see Chiefs wanting the outer in the top side by the looks of things. Have control of that part of the map as Spooks again on the blue buff, but will dodge away from Nada and Sybil. He does get out, but he was being very cheeky looking at that blue buff. Of course, the Dial is having a numbers advantage in this area. Swipe and not having the teleport available just yet. He is nowhere to be seen. No, he's just going to get it back right now, but he's happily farming away. You mentioned the farm difference before between the top laners. Already now it's 30 up for Swiper, and you have to argue he's the top laner that needs to farm more. He's the top laner that will be able to scale immensely well in terms of tankiness and damage into the later stages of the game. The Rumble never really scales for tanky stats, only the raw damage and becomes a pseudo tank with the Zonias. So the more farm that Hecarim gets, the more fed that Swiper finds himself, the better a position for team fighting that the Chiefs will find themselves in for contesting. You can see Sharp and Nada trying to push Radio and Egem off the turret, but Corky doesn't really care right now, has almost the Trinity Force completed, has the two important parts there, Phage and Sheen already completed. And King is getting farm in the bottom side as well. It feels like the teams are trading farm for an AD carry on Dials versus the top laner in Swiper. But you compare the farm difference and both AD carries are still the exact same. So they're not really trading in a positive way whatsoever. The Chiefs just moving around the map with a lot more efficiency to find a, a farm onto every single carry off their roster, whereas the Dials a little bit unrefined, perhaps, in their map movements. Well, they will catch Spooks out there. He was trying to get a ward down, but Perfection now going to ride oh, in. Misses man. the ulti, though. Barrier is down. Swiffer, though, will get the kill. Perfection hurts to see it there, but just missing that Azir ulti. What can you do? The Azir ultimate misses, and you're in the face of a victor right there. You have no choice but to fight him, and when it's a victor in particular, you take too much damage to be even able to and fight. Sybil coming in actually goes in 1v1. He's three levels down. No Gravity way. Field goes down there as well. Yeah, I agree with no way. Uses the flash, but that was a very optimistic kill as King might be dead to swipe a 1v1. Has to lifesteal just a bit more. The Ignite doesn't quite kill him, but that's a good trade for Swiper, who's a level up at least on King. Definitely a good trade for Swiper, who's looking to almost accelerate his Trinity Force. They're looking to match the strength of the Direwolves in their mid-game comp with accelerated item builds right now. Very smart adaption from the Chiefs roster, finding themselves with a very small lead, only 1,000, but it feels like a lot more. It does, because they're just so much stronger right now, and probably for the next 10 minutes in this game, you have to feel. I mean, we can see King has got his first major item, but Infinity Edge Tristana, Feels like there's more King can be doing. What's he What's he looking to as far as next points of power? Because we saw the spells, they're great early game for taking turrets. Where's the next point that Triss kind of gets good again? Because he's always had that mid-game power though. It's the next big item. Tristana always spikes super hard with the next item flies. You're going to have an extra bit of attack speed from your Q. You've got a lot of extra damage in terms of your kit, but compare that to the Corky who is at his spike right now, and there is no way to compare. The damage output is just so far in favor of the Chiefs. The Infinity Edge alone, auto attacks, is nothing compared to Sheen Prof auto attacks and spells. So no, so you're looking for that next completed either Static Shiv or Phantom Dancer before you hit your next spike. Well, that's a little way off here for the Dial, so we'll see how they get there as the Chiefs lining up for another Dragon. Back in 50 seconds now is Dragon number three here for the Chiefs. Swiper as well, you mentioned, going for that Accelerated Trinity Force has Merc Treads completed, but a Sheen and a Phage now done as well. I mean, Sharp's getting some items, but he's still so far behind in farm, and I don't know if the Dials can actually contest for this next Dragon. It doesn't seem likely, and given their team comp, the third Dragon in particular, at this stage of the game, Sharp nowhere near the level. Swiper's probably going to get 11 before he even finds himself a 10, but you're looking for that level 11 fight now. Between Sharp, Perfection, King to an extent because of the range increase level to Ultimate, they need to find a fight when they hit their strength in terms of spells and champions, not around items where the Chiefs are finding an advantage. Well, Anigal missed there, Nada now knows what's up, does have his ultimate ready, so 
might be safe to try and check some of these wards, but three pink wards in the area for Chiefs means that Dials have no vision of this dragon. No, there's no way for them to go in near the dragon pit without face checking or having their wards cleared immediately. Yeah, so you can see Nada puts a ward down, immediately loses vision. Teleports are up for both top laners, but you said it already, Swiper is level 11 now. And the fact that Swiper's going for that Trinity Force first item, something we didn't mention is how capable he now is of 1v1-ing Sharp. No hesitation, no need to worry, can easily take that guy down. See both top laners wow. want to go in, King though takes a massive chunk of damage. Both top laners will join in Sharp, maybe a little late, puts a good equalizer down, but Nada almost dead already, King gets chased away, he's forced to flash as Radiant takes out the first kill. Oh. They will kill Swiper. One for one, not the worst trade for the Direwolves. It's not a bad trade at all, but given the fact that the Chiefs are still quite low on health and Sharp is full, they can contest. Yeah, perfection, no ulti, but decent amount of health and mana. Level 11 now as well, with summoners up. Ate a big chunk of poke, though, by the looks of things. So the Direwolves, they might try it, but it is risky. All it's going to take is one laser onto perfection, and he will go down. But hanging around potentially to stop this, instead they want to go mid. Yeah, they're trading here. They know they can't contest with this dragon. The Chiefs will get dragon number three for themselves. The blinding. But they're going to try and get a tower yet, each of them. Oh, well. Might be able to line it up, does miss the next one, but Direwolves might not have enough strength to take this tower out. Swiper is back. So the Direwolves who look to trade don't oh, get right anything there. after that. Being very cheeky, trying to find some poke down. Oh, Nada's back now as well. Does Vakir over the wall. Sharp's going to find him. King wow. jumps in. That's going to force the flash. He oh. gets out. Yeah, it does get out, but a good summoner burnt there by Direwolves. About all I could ask for, really, because, again, lost the dragon, didn't get the tier 2 turret. Things looking a bit grim here. Chiefs, again, a slim goldie, but it does feel like much more than that. Four members surrounding him, and all they get is a summoner spell. He gets out with his life. It's a very, very unfortunate scenario to find yourself in. You're right. The Direwolves further and further behind with everything. Dragon control, in particular, is the big factor right now. The Chiefs do not have a big gold lead. In fact, they even found a kill onto Swiper in that last fight, and it was a one-for-one -one trade overall from the actual team fight. But the Dials, again, not getting that third drag, and the Chiefs are not too far away from a very big win. They're trying to control the blue buff here as well. Nada that eats a binding, looking for an engage. Perfection getting stronger here, does need to scale up, and I guess that is something that the Wolves can hang their hat on. They do scale nicely, but getting through this pretty rough mid game is going to be a tall order. It definitely is. They're finding themselves in that Tristana-based trough, the Azir, not in a completed item, and Swiper can kill Sharp right now. Yeah, no, Swiper might just go in, does have his ultimate. Sharp forced to flash away, uses it. Egypt's here as well, actually goes under the turret, equalizer down is good, but Swiper might just have enough health to get away. No, the trade does come through. Egypt deciding not to use that spell shield to reduce the slide amount until a later date. Unfortunately, Swiper is going to go down there. He's just going to walk away with his head high there and say, bad luck, buddy. Yeah, it might have been cool name related, but can't save his teammate Swiper as perfection. Gatekeepering the crap out of the mid lane turret, able to keep it relatively healthy. And King getting through those two items. Spike, you mentioned, has got a zeal now. Yeah, Victor's so good at being able to prevent any siege from going down, but so is Azir. The siege, anti-siege regards it. Uh, rather that they both have is phenomenal. So everyone's starting to ramp up in items again. It's starting to hit this reset point where the gold lead has not accelerated in the past while, except for top lane. And as mentioned, Swiper going for that Trinity Force first item, has his home guards completed now. He can 1v1 sharp with no problem whatsoever. And this is the biggest concern for the Diawood. Yeah, it's not even just Sharp, I think, that is worried. I mean, he is worried, well, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, both King and Perfection, these big carriers, are also now under threat from the Assassin-style Hecarim build here. Gonna be tricky here for the Dials to win the next few team fights, but they just need to find a way to get their farm here. I guess the other problem though is that the Chiefs, even if they just keep the game like this, they'll eventually get to five dragons and all the scaling in the world's not gonna stop that sort of damage output. There are now multiple ways for the Chiefs to find themselves an avenue to come out victorious. That is what you can take away from this game right now, is that the dragon is almost a side objective for them. Being three to zero is a big difference and they've still got extra towers to take out on the map. The mid turret, the only outer left available on the map, the Chiefs might attack that next. Yeah, you talked about that standing gold. The Chiefs get a tower and immediately that gold lead bops up to about 2,500 gold. Azir again, still keeping that mid tower healthy. But you said already Sharp couldn't stand in there. Just means he can't defend from Swiper. Swiffery knows you there. Yep, there's, there's a big ward on top of it. They don't oh, know there that. You yeah. go. There you go, all right. <laughs> Put a pink ward down, managed to find that one and like a little sheep, which will back into the lane. I mean, again, Swiffer just being very safe, farming nicely. Actually has a good CS lead on Perfection. He's been trying to make a couple of plays, but that misstep there in the 
Um, Midland 1v1 against Swiffer was his last one, and that one didn't work out too well, unfortunately. That's the big difference right now between both teams is Swiffer feels content and very comfortable in just farming. He doesn't need to make big plays to get his team a lead, whereas Perfection's starting to get hyphy and feel a little bit antsy about making some plays, whether they're good or not. Oh, actually, Egypt's taking a play. Splash ulti's in. Good headbutt, though, from Nada. Might be forced to ulti out of it. Does ulti now. Double pulverized down, but Sybil's still getting chased away. Nada forced to flash. Sybil already used his. And the dials will burn a lot of spells, but they will get out safely. Nada actually headbutting Swiper over the wall, so no real damage threat coming out there from the Chiefs. So very good position to be in. They force the Alistar ultimate, but they completely reset again. No one going down. But dials, they need to find their iron on some kind of fight soon. Surely you can see that Sharp has accelerated his build. He's got that zone use now instead of Sork shoes, in fact. They want to fight soon. Yeah, I mean... I think King's almost at two items. Perfection just got his death cap, but he's getting ganked now. Can't quite go through that. Binding will land on a Sybil. Ultimate down for Victor, and that's an easy kill for the Chiefs to also get the turret. Sharp now going to return into the mid lane. Does tag Spooks King. He wants it. The equalizer's down. Spooks going to take a bit of damage. Nada coming in. Finds Spooks there. Headbutt pulls him back in, but he doesn't have an ulti. He's going to die by the looks of things. And Swiper, he's dived into the back lines. He's gone crazy. He's trying to get something done, but he can't find it. Does go down again. Perfection already used his ulti on Swiper. 3v4 right now if the Dialers want to keep fighting. At first I was questioning what Nada was doing, but I can see that he had a different idea to the rest of his team who had found themselves a pony running straight at their faces. So... Reactively killing down Swiper again, a very smart decision from the Die Wolves lineup. But meanwhile, they do sacrifice members for that trade to happen. And sooner or later, it'll actually happen where Chiefs don't lose anybody for that because the Hecarim is starting to ramp up too quickly. I mean, the lead in general is starting to grow for the Chiefs. 4,000 gold up yeah. now. We talked about it already. Those, out, those turrets now equalize 3-3 three to three, and all of that gold lead that the Chiefs didn't have, I guess has just now been blossomed thanks to the Chiefs having again. Decent kills, strong CS, but of course, just now that standing goal that they've been able to pick up. The map's very wide open now, and Dragon's back up in five seconds. The Direwolves need to find something fast. It looks like the Direwolves do want to contest his Dragon, but... Going in, Nada does have his ulti. He just popped his King, gonna get him low. Nada po pops his ulti late, will go down as he's locked up into the gravity field. And the Dials now 4v5 have to contend for Chiefs Dragon number four. They may just have to give up this fourth Dragon. It doesn't give them a fifth dragon buff right now. It's only the win condition of that next dragon. So They're going in. Drastic. Sharp uses his ulti. Sybil going to jump in perfection. He needs to find a good line. He's on top of the parallel convergence. King forced the rocket jump away. They will get them out of the oh. pit, but the damage is too big. Swiper doesn't have his ultimate, though. Sharp pops his Zonyas now as well, but the dials are a little too low. Sybil goes in, tries to steal it with a oh. Prey Seeker, but does not find it. They don't find the dragon, and they have to retreat with no health again. The Diwolves trying their best to stop that dragon from going down, but again, maybe a bit of oversight there of not realizing that they're going to suicide essentially for that. Very lucky to come out with their lives in a situation that was quite dire. And, and look, if the gold yeah, lead had been... intentional. Yep, I know. If the gold lead had been a bit more even, even though the Chiefs had a dragon advantage, the Dials might have been able to actually pick a fight there. But as it stands, the Chiefs not only have the dragon advantage, which is the non-gold objective, they just keep getting further and further ahead. 5,000 gold up. They also had the numbers advantage because Nada was down at the very beginning of that fight. So Dial was trying to pick a fight, and I completely agree. That was the period in the game where they should have been able to fight. But being in a 4v5 situation has now forced them even further behind. And on a team comp that does not want to be behind, they've got the Rumble, who is not really at the mo the max level of possible damage output right now. Not even having Sork Shoes has rushed that zone into the team fighting. So a lot of item sacrifice essentially to win a fight, and they didn't win it. Yeah, no, not yet here. Like you said, the Sork Shoes not coming just yet for Sharp King. Level 14 is getting quite strong actually, but needs that Bloodthirster that looks like his finish. Maybe a Blade of the Ruin King wouldn't be a bad choice either, but he's got a third item coming. He'll need three to really get going, and his fourth is probably his big point here. Perfection also working on his third. Looks like a Bissell Scepter might be coming through, but again, it's just gold that right now the Wolves don't have. And it's not too bad in terms of itemization here for King, because they have all gone for their Trinity Force items before they've gone for resistances, so... King is going to be doing a lot of damage, as is Perfection. Has his two big damage items ready to go, working on that Abyssal Scepter. In saying that, it's still going to be so difficult because of the raw damage output of every member of the Chiefs. So if King can live through the initial burst of the Chiefs, then maybe they'll win a fight still. Still, maybe caught here. Does hit a binding from Ejim, but 
relatively tanky right now. Looks like he's building Aegis of the Legion into Locket, so a strong item there, but you can see Spooks, he's already finished that and has that side, so and again, it's just a bit more gold in a couple places for the Chiefs, and like we said already, that top lane and bottom lane, definitely ahead. Yeah, completely ahead. The, the biggest difference is always going to be the top laners right now. The raw CS difference, the fact that there's even two kills and that they're both itemized in damage has just given a slight advantage to Swiper, especially if they both continue to split push. So the Dial was most likely not going to take that avenue. They're going to try and team fight. But against the rest of this Chief's side, the Venn Diagram is basically the Chief's special right now. They played every single game they can. It's so hard to find a team fight because of the zone control that that creates. Oh, Nada caught again here. Pops his ulti and his talisman, but might not even live. Red buff right here, looking for a couple more kills. Wants to pad that lead. 3-0-3 right now, not doing too badly. Again, these 280 carries have farmed up nicely. But for me, it just feels like the Dials need a little bit more time, and the Chiefs are not interested in giving it to them. No, bleeding them out, essentially, just making the map as barren as possible for them to not give them any chance of an objective or fight. Convergence goes down, Perfection is stunned. Damage goes through, that's ridiculous as Spooks picks up the kill for himself. King now oh. under a lot of trouble, forced to flash out there as he takes a big burst from Corky now. And the Chiefs don't even want the tower, maybe just go for the Baron. They'll most likely go for the tower, then rotate either to bottom or the Baron. Instead, they aren't going to go for it. Now they're not having his ultimate available. There's no real way for them to contest this unless they rely on sharp hitting the godlike ultimate. This is going to have to be a good ult. Perfection being down hurts them a lot. Nada found Egypt there, doing? actually. He's trying to buy time with his ult. He pops it down. Nada now forced away. Sharp puts down a decent equalizer. Dodges some of the bindings there with his Zonis, but will go down to Swiper. Now Rady going in onto Sybil. Good tunnel away there, King. Might have to blow them back with his ult. He does go in, but flashes. Ah, oh, burnt there. King Rocket jumps out of the binding. The gravity field will pull him into the stun. Rady going to go up there as the Buster shot's forced out. And the Chiefs just bait them for Baron and now take the turret. Easy done. You bait that Baron. You have complete pigeon control that you have established roughly a minute prior. You know it is so simple for you just to walk around to that Baron area. Make them come to you. Because if you got that Baron, that was going to be game over. And instead, you find, you find yourselves with some free picks and then a free turret in response. Chiefs playing super smart, working around easy win conditions, not going to that throw pit like we saw last week. No, just, I mean, you don't want to fight a team that's very good at team fighting, who's clearly itemizing for it as well. So I agree. I like the way the Chiefs are playing. And Dragon, number five, will be back up in a minute 10 here for the Chiefs. And we talk about the Dials needing to pick an opportunity to fight. They're about to run out of real opportunities to challenge them. And I don't think they're ready for this fight. I feel like every time we look at King, he is farming the crows right now. Because he has been so starved that he's just trying to get farming money wherever he can. It has found him with a 20 CS lead, though, in favor of him over Radair, which is something. But the global gold that is starting to mount in favor of the Chiefs is beginning to become overwhelming. The saving grace, though, of this Dialwolves lineup is the fact that he is working well and truly towards that Blade of the Room King. The fifth Dragon, though, in 30 seconds. Yeah, Dragon up soon here and again. I don't know if the Dialwolves can really challenge the Chiefs around this area. I mean, they're going to get some more in, but the Chiefs are already there with the Pink Wards to clear that vision out. We've seen this every single time. The Venn Diagram zone control, all of the wards around. It's basically impossible for the Dialwolves to get on top of these objectives. But they have no choice right now with this fifth Dragon buff ready to go to the Chiefs lineup. The Dials have to all or nothing. They have to try and fight for this. If they give up that fifth dragon, the strength of the Chiefs oh. will just... Yeah, Might look. have found a pick here on the civil teleports coming up. Perfection is getting dove there. Ulti's them away there as Egypt's forced out. King, good ulti there. Move Swiper over the Buster shot. Might be enough there. Sharps come in. They've gotten one kill, but it's only Egypt. And they're going to be forced out here. The Chiefs still too strong. The Chiefs don't get a kill in response, and Egypt has in fact gone down. But in saying that, the strength of the Chiefs, the fact they've still got all of their health, Swiffer with his ultimate available, they can still fight. The Dials only have Rek'Sai's ulti as far as that goes. Boots going to dive way back in gets knocked up there by Sybil massive damage right from Swiper gonna take out two in perfection trying to kite around but Victor and Corky too much work ready on a rampage there a Swiffer goes forward gets himself another kill Your and King, King he's just trying to buy some time he 
He can't really fight Swiver though, he's gonna make it go of it. Oh. Does not the laser! King, massive outplay, getting the shutdown. But five dragons now for the Chiefs. The dragon five has gone to the Chiefs, but King completely outplaying as Egypt wants more. He does going in, pop the righteous glory there as well. King needs to get in front of the Raptors. Duke the boating, oh, Duke's the right way there, but Radius gonna chase him down. What a scumbag, One Radius attack, gonna Radius. go in there. Oh my God, these Dukes are insane. King does go. finally go down. But he bought a lot of time for his team and they need it. King doing everything he can to try and find themselves with the victories. You can see the 1v1 coming through right now. The fact that Swiffer misses that laser. King with the life steal from his blade through on King finds the 1v1. No Dragon 5 onto Swiffer. That's something. Victor's damage is already kind of <laughs> silly. Yeah. I mean, it is something. I don't know if it's enough somethings, I guess, for us to hear. The Chiefs. 9,000 gold ahead at this stage of the game. Trist, three and a half items, getting to that point where Last Whisper comes online, and she's insanely strong. Perfection actually might have caught Egypt. That's a good pick if they can get it, but just not enough damage yet for Perfection. Oh. Nada, he goes in, he wants to chance around the side as well. He's just walked around the side here, and Nada now getting ulti <laughs> Civil dives back in. Ulti is down there for the rumble, but the dials filtering in. Good headbutt there from Nada, but it's not enough to prevent the kill on Chiefs. 2v5 right now for the Diables as Chiefs go on to Baron. Diables with another desperation play, getting overexcited in their attempt to stop the Chiefs from invading their jungle. All of that for around the blue buff area. They do give up the Baron. Perfection is about to find himself a Swiffer. I don't know if he wants to find himself a Swiffer. He's got three items. Does. That's not bad. Swiffer has four. One of them is a perfect hex core. Yeah, he's got a couple more items there in terms of uh, in terms of gold. He's so really he's strong. Doing quite well for himself, Swiffer. Besides the small hiccup, but it wouldn't be a Swiffer game without getting one v one. That's true. As the uh, Scottercraft does go down, though, the Chiefs again, despite the fact that there's nothing on the map, they really can take as far as major buffs go, making sure to keep that objective and vision control up here. Perfection again, moving forward. King actually getting jumped on by Swipe as forced to ulti him away. Trist is getting stronger. Perfection scaling up here as well. But again, the Dials need to buy time, and I don't know if they can buy enough. At this point, they might need 15 to 20 minutes to neutralize this game. No, it's definitely starting to feel like the Chiefs' comp has completely outscaled that of the Dials right now. They did have themselves a time bomb, essentially, with the Rumble, and the Tristan is only just starting to come into the strength now with the Azir. But that strength is non-comparable to the side of the Chiefs. Five dragons. Oop. Might have found Swiper though, doesn't have an ulti, no flash of course with the smite. Damage is good, that's enough, that's a good pick for the Direwolves. Almost a kill though, Swiper made them work for it. Yeah, not having his ultimate, still doing that much damage, just credit to how big he is right now in his Hecarim. But yes. hey, meanwhile, Sybil trying to join in, Sharp puts his ulti down just a wave clear, but Baron up creeps, oh. making that a little bit tricky. Sharp eats a victor ulti, will go down out of stasis. Sybil might chase in, not a two-man knockup. Fight Spooks, but Egypt oh. gets perfection, ultis them away, but there's too much damage coming through. Now Sybil gonna try and get himself out of there. Will walk away, King again, trying to lifesteal. But the Chiefs are just too strong, they'll take their first inhibitor of the game. It'll be in top lane. The Morgana binding connects and they find themselves perfection. The God bleeds many times in this particular game. The Chiefs looking so strong as a 5v5 lineup right now. Very hard to contest them. Champions, rotations, and vision control. Every factor right now, the Chiefs are playing perfectly. Yeah, almost 14,000 gold up here as well. Almost insurmountable for the Diwolves here. We saw them hold on against Legacy last week in what was a very long back and forth game. We know they have the capacity in late game, but it has to get to late game first. Right now, the Diwolves almost praying for a miracle to see and hope that this game goes on just a little while longer. Are oh, the Diwolves well and truly stuck in a mid game drop? Sharp in particular has found himself in Negatron Cloak in about the past 15 minutes in terms of items. Has not had a chance to last hit without being killed. Yeah, almost 100 CS between him and Swiper. And that level of... discrepancy is the problem as well. Swiffer just stalking his prey here. 14 to 18 oh, hey. here, max level victor, damage goes through, ulti and a death ray is almost enough. One Q's gonna finish it in there, boom! Auto attack in the back. And as if on Q, thank you Swiffer for making my statement make sense. They find him for trying to farm the Negatron, not enough to save him because he has been completely starved out of this game. Yeah, Swiffer working on a Lich Bane now, that'll be his final item of the build. Last Wister is up for both ADKs. They're actually sitting at four atoms apiece, and King will have a reasonable late game edge here, but Swipe is the real problem. Good headbutt from Nada, trying to get him out of the way, but Dials will surrender their tier two bottom turret. 
But they're running out of structures to give over to the Chiefs. This is their last turret, essentially, right now. If this turret inhibitor go down, it's going to be very difficult for the Diables to find any semblance of a fight left. Bukesto trying to dive in, has his ulti, kit, feels fairly safe. King Ooh, gets wow. the charge onto Swiffer. That damage from a laser, though. Yeah, Victor's not messing around as far as damage goes. We heard Spawn talk about it again in the pregame. Victor's just always good. Every level, and especially with an item advantage, the amount that a Victor scales is just gross. W there as well, coming through for Spooks. Lines, no, doesn't line it up. I think he just pops it there in the back. But flies in. Dials might find a spot now, but they're just taking poke at this point. Both Corky and Victor just being patient in the dial. Uh, the Chief, sorry, have no reason to rush, especially with Swiper doing this. No, with Swiper split pushing, Dragon 5 for the second time available in 20 seconds. The Chiefs can just sit here and slowly bleed them out. Well, oh, doing it relatively quickly, actually, as they will take this tower perfection. Chunked out a little too low, tower will live. But they get the one in mid. They have to fight right now. They found Egypt. That's the first kill. They will get it. Simul, though, going to go down in return. A one for one. Not what you want in a 3v5. And Spooks dives his way in. Gets the double stun there. Chrono breaks his way out to safety. And the Chiefs now oh, collapsing hey. on the back. Swiffer dives in. King is absolutely dead as Victor takes him out. Perfection. Trying to make some plays. Doesn't have enough. Oh. He's actually already dead. Sharp does get the kill onto Echo. But the ace will be completed. There is not as the last to fall. And the Chiefs, in very dominant fashion, will stay undefeated at the start of Week 6. Chiefs find themselves the team fight. The split pushing from Swiper. And again, all of this roster of the Chiefs looking essentially unstoppable. The fact they can now rely on Radair to carry. They've got the option of Swiffer in the mid lane if everything goes all right. And then even Swiper, that Hecarim was massive. Look, that was a Swiper game for me. Like, yeah. Not to discredit credit radio or any of the chips play there. That was an amazing Hecarim game from Swiper, and you said it already, it's just too many threats on the Chiefs. Yeah, you look at the difference between the top laners, and that is the big talking point in that game. King, a valiant attempt and a very strong effort from him. He gave it his all, but it was not enough in the end there. Yeah. And I feel like Perfection just had a bit of an off game. We saw that Azir ulti being missed. Yeah. Mechanic's not normally something he's known for messing up, to be honest. He's an amazing mechanical player. Yeah. Not a good showing there against Swiffer on a big champion for him on Azir. Yeah, and it was something that we mentioned during the game is the perfection, I guess, felt pressured to make plays. And it doesn't necessarily bring out the best plays in you. It makes you just go when you think the time is right, not when it feels right. So perfection, finding engage attempts and opportunities, but not the ones that he wants to do, just the ones that he has to do if he wants to win the game. Yeah, and we're going to get a little bit more of those to throw out to the war with Atlas and Spawn. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. And what another... Incredible performance by the Chiefs. These guys don't look like they're stopping anytime too soon, Spawn. Yeah, they certainly don't. You know, credit to the Direwolves. They took it to them early, got the lanes that they wanted to, shoved down those turrets, started to get the objectives rolling. It was a relatively close game, but boy, as soon as the Chiefs get their hand on any dragon at the moment, they just control the area, take away every semblance of vision on that side of the map, and they just dominate that whole objective. Yeah, this is the thing. And as soon as Chiefs create a situation where you're forcing the other team to engage them they're all over and it does seem to be based on this vision we do have a whole lot of replays here of the dragons third fourth and fifth that we're going to go through and have a look exactly how they managed to get these working in their favor yeah so what i want to point out right now is you can see the two deep wards coming through from the chiefs they know as soon as direwolves are going to approach them and direwolves they're within touching distance there's only a thousand gold lead so as we roll this one out they feel they have to fight they go in and it's a lot of back and forth in the end egm lands a great uh nearly lands a snare and then a great Ultimate comes through from Swiffer. And if we pause right here and keep everything off, this looks like it's going to be an okay fight. There's a great equalizer on the map, some low members. King trying to kite back. It's only Spooks and Swiper on the black line. Nada's about to fall down. But as you roll this one out, you see that the Chiefs, they're just unrelenting. They continue to dive through. They're trying to take out members. King outplays Swiper. But by this stage, there's so many dead members. The Chiefs are still relatively healthy. And because of how fed Spooks is, if Perfection goes near them, he's going to die. If King goes near them, he's going to die. So the call is made to back away. The Chiefs secure another objective. And it's just because they always know exactly when Direwolves are going to approach them in these team fights. Yeah, and it's the fact that the Chiefs held onto their big cooldowns as well. They had a whole lot left available towards the end. And as you paused it, we moved back in. And then the Onslaught of Shadows was used. Direwolves, they use everything. And then the Chiefs hold onto what they have so that they can back away, take the dragon with the control of the cooldown. Yeah, and it was also the difference 
hands of the Hecarims. That was Swiper, a full assassin at that point in the game. Had his Trinity Force, was trying to Dive King, take him out of the map. And we have the next Dragon Fight. So what happens? The Chiefs, they get a little bit more of an advantage. Six minutes go by, Dragon Force up. And once again, you see Dire Wolves this time actually get to the area first. They try and contest it. And as we roll this one out, it's actually Nada, once again, aggressively trying to go onto Aegem. They think they have control over the area. The Chiefs are arriving late, but they just press the go button again. <laughs> yeah, Nada just goes down incredibly low. Does have, of course, that ultimate available, but there's nothing that they can do at this stage. The Chiefs, they pick up at least one kill, and then they can move towards the dragon with the mana advantage. The problem is, this is fourth dragons. They have to fight. So actually... Direwolves choose to re-engage here, and they're very lucky to get out with what they do. A good equalizer comes through. Spooks gets caught up a little bit, but then the rest of the team hits that big go button we keep talking about. Huge laser across. Emperor's Divide has to disengage it. That's dragon number four going over to the Chiefs, and I'm sure you can see where all of this is leading to because it's going to be the next dragon fight. Dragon fight number five, where they've controlled that objective. They're slowly punching you up around the map. They're brutal with how they play it, and it just all leads to this occasion. Yeah, and there's the fact that once you have five dragons as well, there's no way that anyone can fight. You can move in, you can take whichever objectives you want. We saw the Chiefs do that. We do have the replay available now, and we'll just see quite how impactful it is. But thing is, Chiefs, have they've done all the work now. They picked up the first few dragons, but they won team fights off it as well. They created this gold advantage. Yeah, and you can see the gold advantage is there now at 7,000. You can see, once again, the vision on the bottom side of the map. Watching the approach, it's only really a pink ward over the back side of the pit that allows Direwolves to have any vision. And, you know, let's roll this one out, just jump straight into it, because the Chiefs, they start it up, and Radio goes nuts. He's chunking out Nada, keeping everyone safe. A a really good initiation comes through from Swiper. He's just zoning the entirety of the team. Radiant does way too much damage. The Chiefs chase them out. In the end, Swiffer gets a little bit overzealous and King picks up a kill on the back end with some very fancy blue suede shoes, but the yeah. game was pretty much over from there. It was at that point. Of course, the kill did end up going over onto King at the same time, so they traded that one out, but at that point, the Diables had to go for all the desperation plays they possibly could. But what I want to talk about, Spawn, is how any of these teams are actually going to find a way through this playstyle of the Chiefs. Because you mentioned, as soon as you know um, the Chiefs managed to start getting a hold of these dragons, they never let you. They never stop. Well, Diables actually did the right thing. They picked the comp to try and combat it. They just were never there a minute and a half early. You have to set up for these objectives yeah. before times. You know they were concentrating, trying to get farm, and they were always just a slight second too late. You can't play reactive League of Legends against the Chiefs. They just beat you every time. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate. But